fishing isn't always fun and games. No one knows that better than a true lake commando. A lake commando also never backs down from a fight. But today, they may have more of a struggle than they bargained for. I knew I should have stayed in bed this morning. I love fishing new water. The challenge is always the same. Find fish, trigger strikes. Ooh, that's a big fish. But what I really love is beating the other guy. I got a fish. This is Lake Commandos. There's one thing a lake commando can always count on, and that is, when you're always fishing unknown waters, you can't count on anything. Today, Steve Benaz and Bassmaster Bro Andy Young find that out firsthand when they take on a small, overpressured urban lake. I have two questions that are gonna have to be answered today. Number one, okay. is this lake any good? <laughs> <laughs> But number two, those that front that came through the night, you know, the night before last, uh -huh. that was major. I mean, it was storming and cracking and banging yeah. for hours. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I know there's some rocks, some rocks out there. There's really? a, there's there's a there's a rock point, and there's weed lines, and I know there's a lot of docks. I know there's a good population of some 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 hog bass in here. At just under 300 acres, today's battleground is small in size, but a well-defined deep weed line and plenty of shallow cover makes this tiny lake a virtual largemouth bass playground. Still, the mission of finding and catching pressured fish in heavy cover won't be a walk in the park. Let me set the stage for you today. I'm fishing with a guy who fishes bass for a living, who fished the classic and won I think the last Bassmaster Termini fished. Yes, Andy Young is a mighty bass angler. So what do you do in that situation? You pick a technique that allows you to cover water and the Carolina rig is perfect. Now I've got two rigged up. I've got one with a half ounce tungsten for fishing the deep weed line. I've got one with a 3 16 head for fishing the inside weed line. And we're both on fluorocarbon, 15 pound Berkeley trialing, 100% um, fluorocarbon. I'm gonna be fishing two different reels in the deeper water, I've got a Revo MGX. It's seven nine to one. I want to have that fast line retrieve. For a rod, I've got a seven foot six inch medium heavy Veracity rod from Abel Garcia. It's got a good fast action tip and a lot of backbone. It's perfect for setting hook in the deep water. For a bait, the trigger craw, the Berkeley trigger craw. This thing catches bass across the country. I'm going to be starting off with green pumpkin and these clear water lakes. It's a deadly color, but I'll go to black blue. I'll go to just about anything to get bit. Now, Andy's gonna be a tough competitor. This guy oozes bass, but today, he's going down. Steve, he's a great guy, but I'm just gonna have to take him down today, man. <laughs> uh, the weapon of choice that I'm using um, is gonna be a jig worm. It's, it's late August, it's light winds, so I'm thinking a, a good old jig worm's gonna do it. And uh, what I'm gonna put on it is a seven inch Berkeley power worm. I fished a little untraditionally, uh, most people use a spinning rod with like eight or 10 pound line and, and braid or braid to fluorocarbon. Um, I prefer to fish it on 15 to 20 pound uh, fluorocarbon on a heavy action or medium heavy bait caster. So we're gonna go out and have fun and I'm gonna take old Steve down today. <laughs> Weather conditions will be a factor, at least early in the day, as heavy fog and cloud cover have reduced visibility. But the forecast is for clearing skies and a near perfect day for a classic commando battle. There's a big point on the south end of the lake here, actually the west end of the lake, yep. that just looks too delicious not to start at. I agree. But this, uh, this weed edge runs the whole shoreline. And yep. When you got that much cover, you're gonna just kind of try and hit the hit the prominent stuff first and see what's happening. So I agree. I agree. This could be bass. A lake commando 
relies on research and experience to tackle new water. But once in a while, those things aren't enough, and today is one of those days. I have to admit, right now, we're bombing. Steve and Andy started the day with Steve's Carolina rig, but the bass were nowhere to be found. God, we're already, I got like 20 minutes left in my, yeah. Ugh. Then I gotta turn it over. All right, let's go. Okay. No bass, no bites, and no answers. Maybe we finally found the day where the fish take home the title. I think we just need to switch to a jig worm. Lake Commandos is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Power Pole, shallow water anchor, swift, silent, secure. Abu Garcia, for life. Vrabil, trusted gear since 1938. Berkeley Power Mate, fish bite and won't let go. And by Quebec Outfitters, plan your ultimate fishing trip today. The lake commandos may have finally met their match in a small, high-pressure, urban lake loaded with bass that, so far, want nothing to do with what the commandos are offering. So, Steve, you got like four minutes left in your pattern. You want to just concede? Yeah, actually. You, you do? Take, yeah, take over the boat. All right. <laughs> you know what? I love Carolina rigs, but today they're just not working, and I think maybe we need to go to a finesse presentation. Steve Panaz's Carolina rig was a bust, so the guys have moved on to Andy Young's finesse jig worm. Andy has been one of the hottest sticks in the upper Midwest for a number of years and has taken that talent to the national stage in a big way as an FLW and Bassmaster Touring Pro with a rookie season win at the Bass Pro Shop Central Open on Lake Amistad in Texas and an invitation to the granddaddy of them all the 2015 Bassmaster Classic. Hey, I love fishing with knowledgeable, passionate anglers, and Andy Young is a knowledgeable, passionate angler. There's no doubt that he uh, he's won on the Bassmaster Trail, and he's qualified for the Bassmaster Classic. This guy knows how to fish. Good one. Let me get the net for you. You yeah. need the net? Yeah, I, I suppose. He's a pretty good one. It's a nice bass. Look at here. How big is it? It's, it's a good one. Ooh, real nice one. Hey, for a start today, I'll take it. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna get him towards the net. Nice fish, uh, Andy. Nice jiggy. fish, Andy. Oh, wow. Wow, what's that? <laughs> That's three and three quarter, I think. Yeah. Huh? Nice. A jig worm. Jiggy. That's one nothing. Are we going numbers or total weight? Numbers. Numbers? That fish is the same as a one pounder. Oh, so I got two then. <laughs> <laughs> I chose the jig worm because this time of year, you know, early September, end of August, the fish usually are schooled up still on the outside edge. Um, today that wasn't the case, but uh, I guess the fish don't read the same books we do. Andy took a great fish on the jig worm, but it was the only bite we had in about an hour, hour and a half using the pattern. So we made the decision at that point to punt, to open the box, to try crankbaits. Fish. Oh boy. It's a bass finally, huh? Oh, it's a good one. Oh yeah. Check it out, baby. Tied yeah. up. Well, I got to land it first. <laughs> yeah. That's a good fish. Yes, right there, nice baby. Fish, pal. Hooks buried there you go. in it. But Beautiful. I like the fact that this fish ate the bait in the front. Not a giant, but I'm on the board, baby. <laughs> I'm on the board. Tied up. Train's rolling now. <laughs> nice. It's amazing what one bite can do for your confidence. Yeah. But as any good Lake Commando knows, one fish does not a pattern make. And the crankbaits, both deep 
and shallow, only produce the one fish. So after more than four hours, locked in a 1-1 tie, the commandos were still no closer to winning this largemouth bass war. We're gonna try to jack them out of these weeds. Hey, there are a ton of different line options out there, but you can really break it down to two types, low vis and high vis. Both deserve a place in your arsenal. I'm a big fan of high vis lines when trolling, particularly when fishing multiple lines, because they're easier to see, they're easier to control, and that helps me avoid the issues that cost me fish. High vis lines are also great when fishing baits like a jig on a slack line presentation. It helps me detect bites when I'm not in contact with the bait. Rather than feel the bite, I see it in the way the line reacts. There are times high vis lines will spook fish, particularly in clear water. If you're concerned, add a short liter of mono or floral to your main line. When fishing spinning gear, I like the connecting knot to stop just above the first rod guide to make casting easy. Any longer and friction will rob casting distance. If you're shying away from high vis lines, realize you're leaving a valuable tool on the shelf. This segment is brought to you by Yeti Coolers. Yeti, built for the wild. In one of the toughest commando missions we've seen, Steve Panaz and Andy Young are struggling to unlock the secret to a small lake that so far has them stumped. So what do you think we should do, bud? Well, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Both guys' original patterns, the Carolina rig and the jig worm, resulted in just a single biter. Even a 180 degree switch to fast moving crankbaits only produced one fish. But lake commandos will never admit defeat. So Steve and Andy are on to pattern number four, shallow water cover and jigs. We're gonna switch it up and try something, something a little different. We're just gonna go down the bank and fling jigs around docks and swim, in, swim them around these, these weed clumps and sand patches and, and see if we can't do something like that with that pattern. Something we haven't tried yet, and it looks like some pretty good water in here, actually. There's it looks one. phenomenal. You got one? Got one. Oh, man. Good fish. That didn't take right long. Right through the beak. That's where you want them. Yeah, buddy, right there. Bang. Not the greatest, but hey, I'll take them, huh? Yeah. He wasn't on the dock. No, he was out. He was out. I think the reason we switched from away from the crankbait is because it slicked off and it got sunny. And when it's slick and sunny, a crankbait bite is tough. Uh, crankbaits, I need wind and clouds, or usually the best. But um, you know, when it slicks off and it gets sunny and calm, go skip a jig. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't really like the looks of these ducks. There's one. Oh, it's just a. I got one. I got one right here. Little oh, guy. <laughs> hey, look at this, this. Look at this one. That's a nice one. Sweet. Look at how dark these are. Hey, off. how can you go that long and get a double off the same daygum dock? Dock. Look at that. Look at how dark these yeah. are from being under the docks. That's cool, though, isn't it? Nice. All right. What are you thinking, pal? Docks are fun. Yeah. We had that double and you had one other fish. So the score three two right now. I I I'm my thoughts are we got high sun coming up. Let's go hit a series of docks on a clean shoreline and just see what happens. I agree. There's the one. Good one. Good fish? Oh yeah, nice one. You need a net? No. I'll just lift. <sighs> Look at he gobble that jig. <laughs> Look at that right there. So that's the third one on a dock. This that's was the, the last uh, dock we were yeah. going to fish. Andy took a different approach today. He had a black blue jig, but instead of a black blue trailer, the craw he had was green pumpkin. And the, and the impact was pretty dramatic. They had the profile of the bass jig, that dark jig coming through. But the, uh, the movement 
was real light colored and fish really responded to it. There's one. You got another one? Another one. Get over here. <laughs> Uh, you're gonna you you owe me a jig <laughs> and a trailer. That's a good one. That's a great one. Nice fish. Look at there. You got him on the outside weed line, yeah, right? Right. I just flipping that little bit of weeds right there. I am down by five. It's a decent fish. All right, you're going back. Thanks, buddy. Woo! Holy cow! I knew I should have stayed in bed this morning. Luck does play a, a part in fishing. Earlier today, Andrew had a, uh, Andy had a, a big bass grab a crankbait and, and he, it hit just after he pulled out of a weed and the weed rod was back and he, and he lost the fish. But since then he's put on a clinic and, and really what and why he's catching more fish than me right now is he's mentally into the game, I'm out of it. Two, he's making precision casts to docks and to grass and to trees. He's making much higher percentage casts. I'm getting thumped. There's a reason this guy made the Bassmaster Classic. I'm learning right now that braid is not working. He's fishing floral. I need to make the switch. I'm making it right now. That's my only way to keep close. There's one, Andy. Lake Commandos is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Abu Garcia for life. Berkeley Trilene, Angler's Trust, Berkeley Trilene. Yeti, built for the wild. And by Aquaview, see what's really down there. Solving the mysteries of an unknown lake is what a lake commando does. Sometimes the answers come easy, but on a day like today, even the most experienced commandos have to dig deep to unlock the bite. And once in a while, one guy adapts a little better and a little quicker than the other. Good one. Good one. You got another one? Yep. All right, I've got to, I've got to regroup. All right, he's coming in. <laughs> Big fish. <laughs> oh, what a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Under the dock, under the dock. You dude, Come on. Are, you dude are on fire. <laughs> oh, that's hey, a pretty hey, good one. Hey, I have a deal for you. I'll give you a dollar. You buy a lottery ticket, we split it. <laughs> hey, I'm not complaining. It's a nice no, that's fish. a nice fish. Really what it came down to is identifying key places, making key casts, and make, taking it full advantage of the situation. The one thing that really summarized today, I was ready to cast to a log. A fish broke outside, I casted a breaking fish. Andy turned around and threw to the log and got bit by a four, four and a half pounder. <laughs> he was unbeatable today. Big, Big fish. One. Big Ooh, one. nice one. <laughs> Keep coming. Keep coming. Oh. Andy, that's a giant. That's a big one. That's a good that's one. That's a dandy. Easy, buddy. <sighs> All right. All right, all right, <laughs> knock it off. <laughs> Look at that, right through the beak. It was a grind, and in tournament fishing, when it's a grinding tournament, you really gotta stay focused, and you gotta make every cast count, and you really gotta make every fish count. There's one, Andy. Ooh, that's a nice fish. Ooh, look at that. Yes, baby! <laughs> That's no Andy Young fish, but it gets me back on the board! <laughs> the Garmin Lakeview plot trail clearly shows just how persistent the commandos were today. From deep to shallow, they took this largemouth battle to nearly every inch of the lake, and in the end, won the war. Today's an example of when your loss of concentration gets in the way of good fishing. Today, when you did things right, put the bait where it needed to be, you got bit. Good one. No way. Yeah, right at the front. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Steve? -O? I think I'm quitting. I'm done. What you are 
You are the dude today. You're unstoppable. <laughs> you are unstoppable, uh, dude. Thanks. Well, thank you for having me, Steve. <laughs> I, geez. This has been a fun day. You know what? There's not going to be a rematch. <laughs> you know what? I've been beat before, and I've been beat a little bit more than a few fish, but you thumped me today. Oh, I, can see, I can see why well, you're winning on the trail, but well, thank uh, go you, ahead and let that I'm fish let go. This guy go, yeah. See you, buddy. <laughs> That's fun. Hey, what, isn't it fun to come to a new body of water and it. try to break it down? Today didn't start fast. We didn't no, have fish for a couple, three hours, and then Boom, you got on a roll, we yeah. figured it out. Jigs, you know, on docks with yep. craws, and, yep. and, and we put some big fish in the boat yeah. today. It turned out great, man. Congratulations, way to go, way to go. We are gonna do it again. Let's do it. We're gonna I'm, do I'm it excited. again. I, this is a blast. <laughs> hey, if you wanna win what works for us, visit lakecommandos.com or check out our Facebook page. I'm Captain George Mitchell. This is Coastal Chaos. Hi folks, I'm Captain George Mitchell. You hear me talking all the time about innovation and technology. Well, let me share this with you. This is Furuno's all new First Watch wireless radar. All you really need is 12 or 24 volt power source and you've got radar. But the kicker is, you view it on iOS devices, your phone or your iPad. Now what I've done is I've taken a polymer trolling motor bracket and adapted it to the bottom of my DRS-4W. Beauty of this is, it's easy to remove and stow, or if I want to, I can put it on one of my other boats. Now the DRS-4W First Watch Wireless Radar, it's lightweight, compact, easily adaptable to any application. I love it for low light conditions, foggy conditions, rain, but also the safety features when you're running home at night. Coastal Chaos, tips for serious saltwater anglers.